Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Pros and Politics Podcast, where we are polished and poised for greatness and impact. My name is Kahala, and I'm your host. Thank you so much for joining us today as we journey into another episode with another amazing guest. As you all know, we are all about political information and not misinformation and pearls of knowledge and wisdom. And we love to showcase men and women, businesses, and we're all about our health here. But again, we love to showcase men and women who have a tremendous journey and have so much wisdom to offer us and all of our viewers. So today we have none other than the Senior Vice President for Ameren, Illinois, Mr. Patrick Smith. Good morning. Good morning. Happy to be here with you today. Hello. Hello. I'm so happy to have you today. I know, once again, mm -hmm. busy schedules. And so we yeah. were finally able to get it together. Absolutely. So I appreciate your time. Oh, because, you know, you know what? That's uh, a pleasure. It's a privilege, actually. And so I know uh, we we run and we're doing this, but uh, no place I'd rather be. Oh, thank you so much, because, you know, it's not every day that I can get the senior vice president on my platform. So uh, I'd probably be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Mm -hmm. So please tell us all about yourself. Yeah. My, well, I grew up in East St. Louis. Yes. Uh a uh, long time ago, <laughs> uh, we were just talking, um, Chris and I, you know, just, you know, how the first uh, introduction is name, name, then who, you know, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we were playing the who, you know, game and we finally found some uh, common acquaintances and, uh, but grew up in East St. Louis, mm -hmm. uh, born and raised right in the shadow of uh, East St. Louis Senior High School. A long time ago, there used to be a shopping mall called Shop City. Yes, yeah, Shop City. Shop City. Uh, Tri City Grocer, A and P, and uh, and it's it's gone now. It's uh, ironic that what sits there now is a um, a two megawatt uh, solar resource mm -hmm. that's uh, pumping clean energy into the uh, grid in the community of East St. Louis. You know, actually owned by Amherst. So that is ironic. But that's right where I grew up, right down on Forty Six and State. I had two sisters uh, still living. I had a sister that died uh, a few years back from breast cancer. So last month, you know, really a lot of awareness. And I lean in and, and really volunteer a lot with the ACS. But as I was coming up, played sports, went to uh, Assumption High School, played football at Assumption High School, dabbled in a couple of other sports, uh, raised by, you know, really uh, outstanding mother and father. My mom I worked at a Kroger's, uh, a couple locations in East St. Louis. If you're older, you'll know about the one down on 10th Street. And uh, for the younger folks, there was one on 76th and State. And my mom worked there. And my dad was a longtime East St. Louis policeman. He worked there for more than 25 years. Uh, actually, uh, knew your dad, mm -hmm. uh, Bruce. And, uh, and you know, now I'll probably get a chance to tell a couple stories about your dad, too, because <laughs> I knew him as well yes, you by did. playing uh, football. <laughs> But uh, and my father uh, worked 10 years uh, until he retired. Uh, he worked as a homicide investigator with the state. Uh, my mama ultimately uh, went back to school and got her degree in a couple of different things. And she ultimately retired as a, a psychological tester for the St. Louis Public School System. Wow. And she's, um, she's uh, deceased, passed away last year in July. And uh, my dad passed away in 2018. But yeah, grew up. Uh, went to Assumption High School, graduated, graduated uh, went to a few different colleges for a number of different reasons that we can get into later. Ultimately, uh, landed a job at what was called at the time Union Union Electric. Mm -hmm. uh, so I remember we, Union Electric. Yeah, a lot of mergers and acquisitions. And, you know, so we have a name, different name now, Ameren Corporation, Ameren, Illinois, Ameren, Missouri. But started there as a meter reader. So it was a bargaining unit represented job. Uh, and uh, work walking around all the uh, houses and businesses. And I really love that job. I got to learn a lot about the area that I didn't know outside mm -hmm. of East St. Louis because mm -hmm. I actually went into every yard and every business so and the say, uh, you utilities like footprint. 757. I've been in your yard. If, if, if you have a house that was in East St. Louis back in the 80s, I've been in your yard. <laughs> and so uh, reading the meters. But um, it also, you know, it was a sense of pride just working in my neighborhood, you know, driving by my grandma's house uh, mm -hmm. during the work day, stuff like that. So ultimately had opportunity uh, to advance in the organization and accepting an apprenticeship, 
for uh, mm-hmm. as an al- a line worker. So I became an apprentice line worker. Uh, that was a three, four year training program with the IBEW and in our company, Ameren. Mm-hmm. Uh, became a journey line worker at some point uh, and, and did that for a few years and then went into management. And uh, I held successively progressive management roles, uh, supervisor, superintendent, uh, director of divisions. Uh, and I'm in Missouri now working uh, different divisions. And then ultimately I became a uh, officer of the company, a vice president, worked in economic community and business development as a vice president. I led the uh, Missouri state uh, overseeing the operations and the fleet operations for uh, Missouri as a vice president. And then last year, fortunate enough to be promoted to senior vice president of all operations and technical services for our Airman Illinois company. So I work out of the Collinsville office, uh, not right there by uh, the Illinois State Police Building, if you know where that is. So, I do. So that's really a, somewhat of an, uh, didn't seem like it, but an abbreviated version of uh, my journey, my professional journey. Now, personally, um, I'm married, uh, Assumption High School uh, girl, Wash U grad, uh, Crystal Smith, uh, maiden name Ross. Hey, Crystal. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, she, uh, you know, she told me to tell you hello. And, uh, but have two wonderful kids. You do. Yeah, I have a son. He's uh, working in uh, New York. He's mm-hmm. working in New York, lives in Brooklyn, works in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. So that's a nice place to go and visit him. And then I have a daughter. Uh, she's a bit older. She's uh, married, has our first grandchild who will be two uh, here in about uh, on the 25th. So a few days. And uh, we're looking forward to that. And she lives in Lexington, Lexington Kentucky. And they both went to undergrad in, uh, at UK, University of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Son ended up going to Howard School of Law. My daughter stayed there and uh, got a grad degree. She's a doctor of pharmacy. She works at the University of Kentucky Hospital. So they're doing their thing there. So we they travel are. there. And we traveled to New York to see them. So, but that's that's a bit about my nuclear family. But uh, my mother was a Brooks. So, if you wanted me, we could do the whole show on my family. I see. Yeah. And you know what? I I get it because you know you got the Hills and then you got yeah. the Maxwells, and it just builds out from there. Right. And you know, East St. Louis growing up, especially during the times that we did. Um, I know there's a bit of an age difference between mm-hmm. us, but still, that was still a time of family. Yes. And making mm-hmm. sure and, and education and just mm-hmm. so many opportunities. And that's why we love it here, because we love to showcase the amazing people and mm-hmm. stories. So when I was, um, well, first of all, I was so honored when you invited me earlier this year mm-hmm. to go hang out at a, um, a baseball game. And I met so many wonderful people. But that is when you told me your story Mm -hmm. and that's what what was the first thing I said, Oh, you have to come on (laughs) because people have to hear how you started as a meter reader. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's no, nothing, no judgment or anything to that. That's wonderful. That's a great opportunity, Mm -hmm. but that's almost like you hear the stories of, Oh, I started in the mail room or, you know, you're Mm -hmm. managing partner of a firm, but you started as, you know, a paralegal or a secretary. And so just, for people to hear how you took an opportunity because you told me you didn't even want the opportunity. Now, it was a point in my career where uh, mentors played a huge role in making a better decision for me. That you would have made for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because <laughs> you said mm-hmm. I was, you were like, oh, I didn't even yeah. want the opportunity. But mm-hmm. your mentor was like, if you don't go take that job. Right, right. And now look. Yeah. And right. now look. So to take an opportunity and then to know that you could have missed it if it wasn't for good mentorship and being teachable, right? You took it, but to just continue to grow in a space to then find yourself as senior vice president of Ameren, Illinois was just so honorable to me and just so inspiring because we often don't like the day of humble or small beginnings, right? We want, it's a microwave generation. You know, I want to be rich now. Like I want 500,000 followers now. And it's it's a journey. Yes. So tell us, what what can you tell us about like that journey and making sure we don't miss those opportunities? Yeah. And, you know, one, one thing I'll say, like, you know, I watch interviews sometimes. You see it on TV or you might read it in a magazine or some publication and you hear someone, you know, from East St. Louis, 
talking about, you know, what they endured or survived. And, and I, I mean, you know, I don't know everyone's journey. And, and I lived in the heart of the city and been all around the city. And, and I just think, you know, I didn't do a lot of what I'm doing now in spite of East St. Louis. I did it because of East St. Louis. Absolutely. You know, it was because of East St. Louis. Uh, now, we weren't wealthy and this and that. But, you know, who knows when you're young and you're coming up, mm -hmm. you know, if you get home and, you know, you got something to eat or, you, you know, every now and then you go to the zoo or you're going to school, you're just growing up. So, you know, I think, you know, I really love the city and, you know, how it prepared me and, uh, you know, and others to really be able to, to compete in the world. You know, it's really mm -hmm. messy out here now. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're from East St. Louis, mm -hmm. You really might have a toughness about you that you don't get rattled about some of the things that are going on, even though you know they're serious. But when I think about coming through, I'll, I'll focus on like mentors. People have mentors long before they understand that they have mentors. Absolutely. And even the definition of a mentor. And when you start, you know, maybe learning more about that and then you look back and you say, oh man, Mr. Jones, was a mentor or this person was my first mentor. So I've had folks, you know, this and that. I would go down to Leslie's Barbershop. Mm -hmm. You know, I was about the range of where I could walk uh, by myself when I was coming up <laughs> as a kid. It was like 52nd or 3rd. And it's right by the uh, the Sigma house. Mm -hmm. think, yeah. And so. That's when my dad used to go get his hair cut. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. your dad would be in there and others. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was being mentored in there, you know, it, was, it wasn't always G rated. <laughs> it wasn't, you know, but exactly. sitting in, I can still remember sitting in the barbershop, listening and learning. You know, you got a healthy dose of lies going on, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the barbershop, but you also, you know, you're learning things. You're seeing strong black men, Absolutely. you know, talking about this, working this out, agreeing, disagreeing. Mm -hmm. And so, but, you know, so I just, so I just think about, I've always had mentors in my life and, uh, I was a I was a fairly uh, you know I I had some intellectual capabilities I'll I'll say but I didn't have good study habits. Okay. So you know when I coming through I, I played football at Assumption High School and so that's that's <laughs> where I, you know I knew your dad your dad was a referee at many of our games. Yes. And it was amazing when we talked and I finally I didn't know that that was your dad. Right. The dots finally connected. Yes. Yeah. And I just kind of kind of I felt a little bit of a kinship mm -hmm. by having spent uh you know some time either getting you know supported by him or chewed out by your dad because mm -hmm. <laughs> he would tell you hey shut up I oh, yeah. he would but um so I think about you know the mentors and I'm coming through and I'm not the best student but you know, I test well so I get a scholarship to uh what they call Missouri s and t now mm -hmm. full four year huge scholarship. And it's uh, Rolla back in the day. It's in Rolla, Missouri. And I go there, and, and I'm struggling a bit, and I'm not really prepared. And a lot of people don't know this. But uh, when I came home for the summer, because I went there the summer, and I spent the whole year, and I just didn't do as well as I should have. And a lot of it was, you know, I didn't notice at the time. I didn't have the belief that I actually had the capability. Okay. I'm just being honest. Okay. And I didn't, and so, and I just didn't know what to do, how to do it. And I didn't, I didn't do well enough to keep that scholarship. And so they said, hey, uh, don't come back. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up going to uh, Belver Area College and a SWIC. BAC, that's right. Yeah. And so, so you know, and in the, in the point there, and as I look back is, you know, movement is life. Mm -hmm. You know, I kept moving. I failed. But, you know, you hear the probably overused quote, fail forward. Absolutely. And I wouldn't have called it that then, but that's what I actually did. I failed, but I fell forward. You know, I was humbled. I was embarrassed. And I started working at Kroger's again because that was one of my childhood uh, jobs. And I was going to Belver Area College. And then at some point, I'm looking at my friends, you know, moving through college, doing well. And I said, hey, you know, I could do this. Absolutely. And, uh, and, but, but then I divorced my parents from any responsibility. Okay. Because here's what my commitment was at the time. I was like, hey, 
They they were there on the first run, the first opportunity. I blew that. They gave me that was theirs. That was a very responsible. This response. is mine. Yeah, this is mine. So if on whatever I'm going to do is going to have to be on me. Uh-huh. Took out my own student loan, and took myself to SIU Carbondale. And uh, when I went to SIU Carbondale, I was 100 percent focused on the dean's list, doing well. But uh, my career at Carbondale was disrupted because I needed a summer job to keep working, and that's when I got hired at Union, Union Electric. Electric. Right. And so I came home and worked and um, became, uh, you know, I said, stand with school, and I transferred to Washington University. Now, I ultimately graduated from Washington University with my undergrad in industrial organizational psychology, and then I went back and I have an executive MBA from Washington University. But as I was going through school, I was moving up through the organization, but there was a point where I was a uh, first-line supervisor, and I would, you know, was making pretty good money. We'd travel around the country working storms and all of that. And then they wanted me to come uh, take a management staff analyst position in Missouri on a special project. And I turned it down. And it was only select folks in the company that they asked. And my mentors said, hey, and, and Michael Eric that? Dyson, this is one of his quotes, refuse the temptation to scale down your dreams to that which is your immediate circumstances. And sometimes we get so anchored and locked in in our immediate circumstances, especially when they're good and you're comfortable. They're comfortable. And you feel good. When and, you know, like that whole book, Good to Great, mm-hmm. you know, uh, good is the enemy of great sometimes mm-hmm. because you're satisfied and you're complacent. And so because I had a mentor and I was close and I trusted him, he said, hey, you got to go. Mm-hmm. I want you working here with me. I do. He said, I love you like a son, but you have to go. You have to leave here. And I left. And, you know, first few weeks, it was a whole different job. My first time being a professional work person. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, and it, it was, I did it for a year and it unlocked another large promotion for me. And so it just, you know, there's a series of folks on my path. The lady, he, I turned the job down at Ameren, at Union Electric. Because I told the lady, the recruiter, no, my parents won't be uh, happy if I don't finish school. She got up, shut the door. Her name was Johnetta Carver. Sat down next to me and she said, "Hun, you take this job and you go talk to your mother or father. And if they tell you don't take it, you call me back. Because when you walk out the door, I'm going to offer it to the next person. So I went straight to the East St. Louis Police Station. My dad worked in internal affairs at the time. Found him. And I told him, I said, I was head down kicking rocks, you know, really apprehensive about telling them, hey, mm-hmm. I'm going to leave Carbondale and start working. And I always thought I would keep going to school, but still, and he, when I told him, he looked at me, he was smiling ear to ear. He said, man, good. Now you're out of my pocket. <laughs> so Sound like a that was, quote. Yeah. So that was a mentor and the gentleman who told me to go take the uh, staff job and others. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, you just have to have, uh, you have to understand your circle. Do you have folks looking out with you? Because you can't always make the best decision for yourself. No. Yeah. And I think, so you've said so many things, mm-hmm. right? And mentorship is critical. So when oh, I yeah. think back to many of the biggest blessings mm-hmm. that I've received, especially professionally, it was because of the people around me. And by no means, by my own doing, I know it was nobody but the Lord ordering my steps. Mm-hmm. I would not have even graduated. I have a friend. Um, he is the president and CEO of the United Way in Indianapolis. Okay. I think it's wow. central Indiana. And he has done so many wonderful things, and so has his wife. And without his red pen, <laughs> I never would have. Been, because I'm going to be honest mm-hmm. and very transparent. Legal writing mm-hmm. was my, like, if I'm telling you I wouldn't be sitting here a lawyer today, Because legal writing was, it was out to get me, okay? And so he helped me with that. But I found my way to the church because of my girlfriend, Latanya, who I was working, and it was horrible. I was um, in management for Osco Drug in Mm -hmm. Indianapolis. Hated it. Okay, my dad was like, I don't know why you did in the first place. I didn't raise you for manual labor, no way. You know, but that was him, right? right? And so she, I met her 
in the store because she had this beautiful black coach backpack. And I was Mm -hmm. like, oh, I love your backpack. It turned into me coming to church. And then the pastor's sister helped assist me in getting into law school. And then it turned into the red pen that got me through the classes that I took. But I have a very similar story to yours. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting here laughing on the inside because I got kicked out of law school. So many people don't know that, right? Because my father had a stroke. Yeah, I remember. And I remember. he had a full craniotomy. Mm-hmm. He was in a coma for weeks. Mm-hmm. And you know, I ain't playing about Bruce Hill, baby. I will, <laughs> I will risk it all. I will get rid of all of this mm-hmm. I, over Bruce Hill. And so instead of being in class in Indianapolis, I was by my father's bedside at Barnes Hospital. Right. And so when it came time for finals, I ain't been in class all semester. And I was having a hard time in law school anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, went to U of I on scholarship, graduated from Lincoln, fifth in my class, always an academic. But law school was a completely different animal. So they were like, like your school told you, oh, oh, see you later. Like that we got 50 people that would slit your throat and throw you in an alley just to be here. So we don't have to keep dealing with somebody who's not Mm -hmm. doing well academically. So the end of that first year, I ended up getting kicked out of school, but they don't kick you out till August. Mm -hmm. So he got better. Then I went to summer school. I think I took sports and entertainment law that summer. And but can't remember whatever class that was. I did well. And I had a mentor. And he was my torch professor at that time, later became the dean of the law school, Professor Klein. And he was like, I just love her. She works hard. She's a great daughter. And so I had to go before this committee of professors and administrators to petition to please. I know what my GPA is, but please let me back. Mm -hmm. When I tell you my father's and um, his neurologist wrote letters. Wow. And they were like, we have never seen a more faithful child in mm-hmm. all our years of practice. Let this woman back in school. That's outstanding. And as God would have, they let me back. And then your son, your set, well, you know, from your son, your second mm-hmm. and third year, it's downhill after that yeah. first year, okay? Right, right. And so I was able to do well my second and third year and graduate. And mm-hmm. my friend, Fred Payne, with the red pen, I was always worried, right? Well, you know, I want a job and, you know, my GPA. And that's what they look at when you come out. He said, 20 years from now, if somebody's asking you about your GPA, I want you to knock everything off the table. (laughs) He was like, knock all that stuff over. He said, because it's not going to matter then. Mm -hmm. And literally sitting here with you today, I am literally in my 20th year of practice. And when I tell you, nobody asked me about my GPA when I was in law school and the Lord has blessed me exponentially Mm -hmm. in my career. But again, it was the mentorships. It was being the person that Bruce and Riola raised, because Mm -hmm. if I wasn't professor Klein would have been like, okay, keep her out. You know what I'm saying? We, you know, the doctors would have been like, Oh, she came a couple times. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, she, okay. But because of who they raised and because of everything that God has instilled in me, And like you said, having those mentors and no one not to give up, right? Because I could have been like, oh, well, okay, I'll give up. But I didn't. Yeah. And you didn't. No. And then, like you said, you even absolved your parents from all responsibility. So it's amazing the journeys that people take. And that's why I wanted you to come on here. Because, again, there's somebody out there that's ready to give up. Right. There's somebody out there that's like, oh, it's never going to work out for me. I'm never going to get my opportunity. But to be able to hear somebody and then see it like you are actually living. I call it living the dream. You probably won't agree with me, (laughs) but actually living the dream. What I tell you, I'm going to be like you when I grow up one day, you know. And so to see that and then, of course, it's always a blessing for me to see that come out of East St. Louis, um, because what did you say? It's. A lot of times people talk about the struggle, but I'm with you. I didn't have that struggle, mm-hmm. right? My dad was fire chief and a mm-hmm. division one basketball ref and, you know, mm-hmm. all those other things. But at the end of the day, I'm quick to tell somebody I'm from East St. Louis and when folks get to cutting up, like, okay, don't let these, don't let this 
<laughs> don't let these degrees on this wall oh, yeah. fool you, baby, because this ain't that. And so it's still, what did you say? It's still everything that the city and that the people that we grew up around and with right. um, instilled in us growing up in the main oh, blocks. Yeah. Again, it's it's not a, in spite of, it's because of. Absolutely. You know, and yeah. Now, I agree. You, you know, your story is amazing. And I, uh, you know, I've watched you. Uh, just uh, in many, in your many roles, and you know, have you impacted, uh, you know, the corporate side and the uh, civic side? Uh, done great things, and uh, but Thank I never you. knew we shared uh, similar paths. But I do, I do remember. Uh, I remember when I met you. You might not remember. It was United Way yes. breakfast or lunch, and, and uh, Peggy LeCount was there, I think. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. And and that's my first time uh, meeting you. But uh, but you've done so many amazing things. But you know, I'm a, I'm a big, you know, I I look back and I try to really pay attention in the present, mm -hmm. and because you know, as I as I move forward and I became more mature, I started wondering what signs did I miss? Mm -hmm. Why did I make it this hard? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, were, were there easier paths to, to take? take. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. So as a, I was eight years old living on 46th Estate. Power was out, had a big storm. Had a little, little house, I'm in the kitchen. Was the, that was the end of the house. <laughs> and I'm looking in the back, and there's a truck that comes in and lifts a man up. I've never seen it before. You know, now, now I know it's an aerial basket truck. That's my first time seeing it, I'm just looking. It's a man that gets in the truck, goes up, and he works on the line coming to our house and fixes it. And, you know, after a while, we have power. And I'm, I'm watching this man, and I'm looking, and I said, wow, that was something. Mate. So I'm going to fast forward to 1980, uh, was this 1986? Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been at Airman a year and a half, Union Electric. And I said, I wrote a bid on the, uh, to be an apprentice lineman. Okay. I was a meter reader. Mm -hmm. And so... I got to bed and they said, hey, you have to acquire tools. You can buy tools from this place or there may be someone selling tools, you know, that work here. And, this and, that. and then someone told me, hey, there's a guy retiring. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, he's looking to sell his tools. I said, okay. His name was Harry Niedermeyer. Okay. And so I went and found a guy. He worked in the same building, but I was a meter reader. I didn't know people. Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, yeah, I want to sell all of this. He showed me and I looked up at the guy. This was the man that, that was, was in my backyard mm, when, when I was eight, eight years, years old. old. The first man that I ever saw do that work was the mm. man's tools who I was took about to, acquire. to begin my career in that same trade. And I was like, you're talking about getting your steps ordered. Yes, talk about a full circle, my yeah. man. And so, you know, you, so I just wonder, you know, if you just pay a little bit more attention to mm -hmm. this and that, you know, what, what, you know, what could be easier or what did I miss? But yeah, your story is amazing as well. You know? Thank you. Thank you. So let's talk about Amarin mm -hmm. because of course everybody knows, well, when they get their they light bill or whatever they, and they see the commercials mm -hmm. and you know, all of that, but outside of electric, you want to do a lot. Yeah, definitely. So um, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Amarin, you know, Amarin's in Missouri and Illinois. Mm -hmm. We have a, uh, a, a hydro plant, Keokuk, Iowa, where we okay. generate electricity. In uh, Missouri, uh, we're what we call an integrated utility, meaning we have distribution, meaning we distribute uh, electrons and therms, which is gas, and, uh, and we generate uh, electricity in Missouri. In Illinois, we purchase the electricity, okay. and, and we just distribute it. We don't really own uh, generating plants in Illinois anymore. Okay. And uh, the one, uh, one of the only resources that where we own a re something that we generate energy is at 46th and State in East St. Louis, that brand new solar facility. I see them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, yeah, we have uh, sort of over. 2.4 million customers in both states. 
on the electric side. That is amazing. And nearly one million gas customers in both states. Most of, most of our gas customers are in Illinois. Yes, I'm definitely a gas customer. 16,000 uh, natural gas customers. And so uh, been in operation since 1902. 1902. And uh, so, you know, we're well over a century old, but uh, we employ about 9,300 folks. 9,300 folks and several contractors. So, in essence, Amazon's probably responsible for, for employment of maybe 20, 25,000 people uh, doing work in the region. But mm-hmm. yeah, we, you know, we like to say we power the quality of life. You do. Yeah. I know if you watch Spider Man, <laughs> yes. there's a character called, uh, I think, Magneto or something. I don't know. Yes, Magneto. No, no, he, he's, you know, he, he takes electricity, but real people don't actually use electricity. Okay. They use things that use electricity. electricity. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's yeah, always like my a, flat iron this morning. That's right. And it, that's why we're like always an afterthought, you know, electricity and natural gas, you know, and we're powering uh, the quality of folks life. Yeah. But so they use things like everything in here right now. And so, so it's an afterthought. You think about the things, but you don't think about what's powering in that. And so that's why, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, most of the commentary around it is after a storm when the power is out. But yeah, we're on the front end of so many good things, uh, really leaning into the community. We're a, we're a great place to work. Uh, we we uh, made it. Uh, we were. This was announced earlier this year. Diversity Inc. is a publication that really uh, highlights diversity in corporations and businesses. We're one of their Hall of Fame companies now based on our diversity, equity, and inclusion performance over the last 10 to 12 years. Uh, and and, and I my wife actually is the director of diversity, equity, and inclusion at Amherst and uh, working for Ms. Gwen Mizell there. But uh, we're uh, military friendly. Uh, not only for uh, the military, but also for the spouses. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're uh, LBGTQ, mm-hmm. uh, highly rated for several publications. Uh, we there's just so many things about Amron mm-hmm. that people just think about. And you like you call it light, <laughs> you know, light bill. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, but there's you know even and even now with LED lights, the you know the more significant part of the uh, consumption will be from other things. But, you know, we, we were a community partner uh, with our philanthropy, giving away 8 or $10 million a year. We just had a United Way campaign. And we, of course, have a corporate gift to the United Way, uh, you know, to help, as United Way likes to say, help people live their best possible mm-hmm. lives. But we ask our coworkers, you know, hey, in reaching their own pocket. And our coworkers raised over $1.6 million just on them reaching in their own pocket and contributing to the United Way. Uh, that'll one. go into the United Way accounts and help people in need in 2024. So, uh, so you know, it, when you go to the website and you're really looking to plug in, uh, that's a perfect way to navigate and understand, you know, many of the things we do um, as far as, you know, our, our clean energy transformation. Mm-hmm. And looking to be like by 2045 to be what we call net zero, net zero emissions. So we're doing a lot of work on that to uh, invest in our renewable resources so that we can ultimately responsibly and affordably for our customers move away from carbon based uh, generation. But we want to do that in a responsible way so that Absolutely. you talk about the light bill so people can afford to pay the Absolutely. light bill. And, uh, and then lastly, uh, we're a major employer. And so, and there's not probably any time ever that there's not 300, 400, sometimes 500 uh, positions hired in the course of the year. There are several openings on the website. If someone goes to amron.com slash careers, okay. there'll be pages and pages of opportunities where people can look and say, how do I match up now? And then if you don't match up now and, you, and you're still developing, it's a good place to say, hey, this is what I want to be. What are the requirements and not set your path Absolutely. to be able to, to obtain those requirements? We love coming up with a plan here. That's right. The Politics Podcast. So that is amazing. Like I said, when we were talking about just mm-hmm. the different things that we d- would discuss while we were here, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, you all have like one of the biggest footprints, right, mm-hmm. in this region. And I've never heard anything negative. And what I love 
what did you say when we were eight and and kids or whatever, just the power would go out, right? Mm-hmm. And it would take some time. Mm-hmm. My power never goes out now. Yeah. Like not, and I'm not saying because these folks out here, well, my power went out with the last tornado. Well, it was a tornado, but mm-hmm. I'm just saying back in the day, it was very different. And I remember when you all started expressing to your customers the initiatives that you all were taking mm-hmm. so that when there were storms or things that were going on, obviously if a tornado come down and knock all the lines down, that's different. Mm-hmm. But just whatever you all were doing um, operationally to make sure that when it's not that severe, that it would go out or it would go out for a second. And then whatever y'all would do, it would like switch something or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the fact that through the years, just to see how much more efficient it is, you know, in terms of not losing power, because what did you say? It, it powers life. So you can't cook. Everything, right. And my thing is always like, Lord, please don't let the power go out because this sump pump. Because I had, (laughs) after my late husband passed, I Uh had in Indianapolis, I had a, there was a, horrible mm-hmm. a horrible storm that came through and I was at work my mother was home with my baby and the power went out but you know you're in your 20s and you're newly married and you have a baby like you're not thinking sump pump and endorsements and because I'm thinking if I got homeowners mm-hmm. like clearly if the sump pump and the carpet start floating, it's going to cover. Well, that was my first lesson mm-hmm. and I had to purchase a separate endorsement for that mm-hmm. um, but through friends and mentorship, I had a friend that played in the band with him and he had a restoration company. He came in for free with the oh, blowers wow. and the and sucked up all the water. And then he had his team come in and cut the drought. <laughs> Never cost me a dime. But Man. again, that's the favor of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Right. But my point is, like, that's always my worry. Mm-hmm. But when I tell you we've been in our house, what, 12, 13 years, and we've oh, never wow. had that problem. So what, what I got mean? the endorsements. I just need the backup on that sump pump. But again, just to be able to know that I've seen the changes that as a customer that have transpired. And yeah. again, I've never that. heard anyone that works for Amron say, oh, it's always been something really nice that people have had to say. So. Great place to work. I mean, you, you bring up a great point. So think about this. You grew up and you, uh, you either had gas energy or electric energy, but you didn't know. All mm-hmm. you know is things worked and things mm-hmm. operated. Just flip the switch. Yeah. And it kind of creates a sense, and I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but it creates a sense of you're entitled to have power mm-hmm. and and in the ne- there's never really any understanding of how does it happen no but it's an amazingly complicated and and and, and expensive process mm-hmm. to harness electrons and bring them to your outlet at your home mm-hmm. miles away from a resource I can't to, really to, to funnel therms and send natural gas safely Mm-hmm. You know, over miles mm-hmm. to make sure when you turn on your stove or your furnace, it mm-hmm. heats. But but it's hard, really. You know, and we understand that. And so, you know, one of the things when we make these investments, and you said, "Hey, you're gonna have to make an investment. It's gonna cost a little bit more, but this is so that you have the experiences that you have." You know, that's always a little bit of a challenge, mm-hmm. but it really has improved. I can tell you, I've been working storms way back where people, in some cases, were out three, four, five days. Absolutely. And now, you know, we have what we call automation. Things happen uh, independent of human intervention. And so Mm -hmm. a storm happens and there's a self-healing portion to the grid in both states. Mm -hmm. Independent of humans, the grid starts to heal itself. Mm -hmm. Because of the investments that we made, and now your curler, curling irons are working again <laughs> without us, you know, having to call someone out of their bed. Hey, you need to come in mm-hmm. because Kahala's curling irons are off <laughs> and you need to come in and leave your family and go get these lines up. So we've invested in a lot of automation and uh, a lot of resiliency in our systems in Illinois and Missouri so that um, we can have that type of quality of life. And when you start thinking about a lot of the differences between, you know, highly advanced uh, economy and, and just, you know, uh, the social economic conditions in the United States versus sometimes in a third world country, you know, a lot of it is access to clean water and, and energy. Absolutely. 
you know, affordable energy. Mm -hmm. And so, so we're making sure that uh, 24 seven, that, uh, that you're going to be able to have something uh, that you can count on. Well, you all are doing an excellent job. I appreciate that. And you were doing an excellent job and you have inspired me in so many ways. And I just Thank know you. that our listeners and our viewers will be inspired as well. You uh -huh. going to come back? Yeah, anytime you need me to come <laughs> back, I'll come back. Uh, you know, just, uh, yeah, happy to get up here and, and to come and spend the time with you. A couple of things, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, shout out to the Flyers, wish them luck today. And, uh, but uh, great talking with you, you know, again, uh, you know, folks interested in uh, opportunities with Amron, you know, Amron.com. Uh, slash careers, and uh, and uh, and I'll leave this uh, this uh, with you. You know, I thought at one point I told you that earlier that maybe I couldn't do it, and I'll tell you what I really learned. It's just really about something my mother wrote in my the little yearbook when you graduate from high school mm -hmm. it, that made me see her totally different. She she wrote, and I you know she probably it may be a quote or something. But she said it's really all about constancy of purpose. So you don't have to be great all the time. It's got to be a little bit better every now and then. So graduating, getting that job, just do a little bit extra every now and then consistently. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll get your dreams and your goals. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And thank you for tuning in today to Pros and Politics Podcast, where we are polished and poised for greatness and impact. Please like, love, share, and subscribe and join us again next week. Until then, see you later.